Greetings everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. Today we're talking all about vintage lenses. This is a vintage lens. It has no autofocus, it has relatively low sharpness, it has some fairly intense vignetting around the corners, uh, but I love it and I'm here to tell you why. So first up, the reason why I love it is because, get this drum roll please, it is very inexpensive. It's about $20 on eBay. I got this actually for free entirely because my dad had one. This is a uh, um, one of his, from one of his collection back from the film days. And it just, if it breaks, you can replace it. And it's really not a, well, not a massive drain on my wallet. I don't have regret buying this and I have not been going hungry for the past three weeks because I bought this. So, points. Uh, number two, it's extremely light. A lot of my other lenses are extremely heavy. The reason why they need to be heavy is because they are full of autofocus elements and they can zoom out to 300 millimeters. Or they're just big and modern and they're very fast and autofocusing and that's great. But this has none of that and what that means is that it does not have, need any of that, those things and it, it drains out all that weight and replaces it with feather lightness. It can barely, it almost float away if I let it. Uh, the third thing is that it makes my images more interesting. If you have a photo and it ha looks exactly like your eye sees it, that can be beautiful, but that can also be boring because that's exactly as your eye sees it. So you can say, well, yep, yep, that is a thing. But with this, there is vignettes and there is softness and there is things happening and it has that vintagey look to it and it has a vintagey feel. And it feels like, a, like it was taken by someone from a year, from years ago, from a, a simpler time, back when lenses were trashy. Uh, oh well. The other thing I love about this is the shooting experience. Now this is something that's not really a tangible, I can't say, oh here's a shooting experience. But look at this, this is the manual, this is the auto, this is the, but look at this, this is the focusing ring. Look how big that is. Modern lenses have a very, very tiny focusing ring because they have autofocus. And so why would they need to have a big focusing or they have one just in case if you are the kind of person who likes to manually focus or for some reason your focusing system isn't working right now but in this case well, that's just a massive focusing ring and so this is very very pleasurable to hold i can hold it, it the zoom is very very it slides out to zoom it doesn't twist to zoom which i enjoy because it's funny because well the old lenses and it has that this cool i don't know if you can see that or a little meter for i don't know what this is but it's fun that's the really nice thing about vintage lenses if nothing else they are a good time even if because well they're kind of ridiculous and the, the point is not the best image quality the point is to have a good time with them and so there you have it the final thing i really like about this lens and this kind of lenses i have a, i have several vintage lenses and the reason why i really like them is because it forces me to slow down it gives me a challenge see if I go out with my 28 to 300, I can capture everything I possibly can, I can see. Anything I can see, I can capture with relatively little hardship. It's very easy to do. But hey, you strap on a 50 millimeter to your camera and try to go photograph birds, you're gonna have a really hard time. That's gonna be a lot of fun because you'll be like sneaking through the underbrush trying to not scare it. And then when you do it and you get it, I got a fish out of a butterfly, here it is, with a 50 mil. That was impressive, that was a good time. But if I have my 300 millimeter, like, all right, this is, I sit in my lawn chair, I zoom into 300 millimeters, I get a photo of a butterfly. Big whoop, not really. So this is exciting, this is fun, I enjoy it, and it's very, very cheap, it's very light, it doesn't hurt my back, it doesn't hurt my arms, it doesn't hurt my checkbook, wallet, debit card, Apple card play, whatever, not card, card, you know what I'm talking about. However, this is not a lens for all occasions. There are times when the, when all those, the foibles and the interestingness of this lens are very nice. And there are times when it's not so nice. The times when it's not so nice is when you're being paid. So, especially when you're new, if you're just trying this out, this is a great thing to try. And it's great to build the skills of being able to manually focus and control your aperture manually and all those fun things. But if you're getting paid, this is not the time to be learning new things. Get, when you're getting paid, it's time to be using the skills you already have and using them well. And so I would never use this on a professional shoot, at least right now, because I'm still learning how to use it. That's something particular to me, but it's also about the image quality. Even when I, well, let's say I practice with this for the next three months, the image quality, the sharpness 
is not really up to par. The vignette is significant. It has this darkening in the corners. And I can do that in a Lightroom. I can add that with a modern lens. I can make it look like this. But once I have a photo out of this, I cannot then make it look like a modern lens. So if you're looking to buy lenses for professional purposes, this would not be the one for you. It's not gonna set you back a lot. It's only 20 bucks, but just know that you're gonna still have to still have to go and buy a modern lens if you want to do professional things. Uh, the other thing about this is that if you're gonna try and do anything that's moving quickly, this is not the lens for you. Let me just show you to illustrate why. Right now, right now it's set to infinity focus. Now we're gonna spin the focus wheel, we're actually gonna spin the camera, and we're gonna see when it stops at its minimum focusing distance. Ready? Here we go. Uh, all right. All right, that's like a 200 degree focus throw. And the problem with that is if you're trying to get some fast action, you have a football player and he's running and running and dodging, ah, and he's running and running and dodging and weaving, if you're, even if you're really, really good at manually focusing, you're gonna miss focus a ton because it's just impossible to do that quickly, especially with such a long focus throw. The reason why they have that is because it's only manually focusing and they want to give you the ability to get sharp focus. However, the flip side of that is that they tra they're trading right now sharpness for speed. If they made it only then you would never get anything in focus properly. Um, which therefore means this is ideally suited to something that's either moving slowly or something not moving at all. When I was shooting photos of deer, they were just kind of moseying around there. They weren't going anywhere. When I was shooting landscapes, the landscape has been there since God made the world, like, boom, world. It's basically unchanged since, I mean, it's changed since then Patterson was built and trees were grown and stuff like that, but it's not moving quickly is my point. Uh, there's one other thing I want to mention about this, and this, I may mean, have brought this up before, this is a good time. This is a lens that's a lot of fun to use. And when I went and shot my shot the photos to for this test and I was practicing with this lens, I was having a great time, and I didn't film it. And that was on purpose. And I could, I shot some video here, here's, yep, those are deer. I didn't shoot a ton of video there. I didn't shoot a whole vlog about my experiences and what have you, and it's for a very specific reason. Have fun. Buy a vintage lens. Go on eBay. Find one that fits your camera. They're really cheap. Go. Put it on your camera. Don't expect the best results. Expect fun results. Expect to learn new things. And enjoy yourself. Let it be fun. Don't let it be work. Let yourself enjoy the experience. Bask in the glow of knowing that the forefathers and foremothers and foremothers for various people from the past have used this and gotten fantastic results and gotten iconic photos. And don't emphasize too much the importance of tack sharp focus. Anyway, I hope you all have had a wonderful time with this. I hope you all have a wonderful time with your new vintage lens if you buy one, because I don't see why you wouldn't, because they're really, really inexpensive. Anyway, as always, I hope you subscribe, comment, do the YouTube thing, because that benefits me, benefits the algorithm, tells them that this is, tells the YouTube spirits that this is something worthwhile that people like seeing. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.